Hi friends, Steve here at Forest Lawn in the Hollywood Hills on a very hot summer day. Almost the end of summer, but still very hot, as you can probably tell by how red I am. And I'm searching for a gravesite today of someone who died in a freak accident. And I remember hearing about this when, that, when this happened decades ago. And then just recently discovered that he's laid to rest right here in this cemetery that I visit all the time. So I wanted to visit his gravesite and pay my respects to him. He died in one of those really just tragic and awful freak accidents that happen sometimes. I mean, there's so many horrible ways to die, really, when you think about it. To die in an accident is bad enough, but when it's just one of those really weird freak accidents that, ex that are extremely rare, you really don't forget it when you hear about something like that. Your heart just goes out to the people who things like that happen to. This famous person happens to be Boris Segal, a director who was killed while filming a miniseries called World War III. Apparently he got out of the helicopter that he was in and he made a left-hand turn instead of a right-hand turn and walked right into the blades of the helicopter. Hopefully it was just so instantaneous that he didn't feel a thing, but still, it's just heartbreaking to hear something like that. And of course, I'm sure it was unbelievably heartbreaking to his family. And some of you, I'm sure, already know that his daughter is actress Katie Seagal. Imagine having to live with that your life, knowing what had happened to your father. Well, what an awful thing to happen to you when you're so young, to have your dad taken away from you in just a split second like that, in such a horrendous way. While her father died at the age of 57, which was young, her mother died even younger at the age of 47 from a heart attack. Well, I've definitely spent a lot of time today uncovering grave sites that have been grown over. Wow. I just got all the grass off of Boris Segal's gravesite. If there hadn't been a picture showing that it was right next to the street, I never would have found it because the GPS showed that it was in a different country. So I updated the GPS and I did a little pan so you can see which section he's in here. He's in the sheltering hills just inside the front gates, not that far from uh, Stephen J. Cannell's final resting place and quite a few other famous people who are laid to rest here in this section. You can see I'm getting very red. I'm gonna have to get back in the car and get some more water. I've been drinking gallons of water today, but it's so hot. I definitely need to stay in the shade. At the bottom of the hill in this very same section is another grave site of a famous freak accident victim. And when I got here, I thought that maybe he was buried in an unmarked grave because his headstone was even more overgrown with grass than Boris Segal's. I couldn't see his headstone at all. The grass in this section is very thick and grows very fast. The gravesite I was searching for belongs to Derek Allen Cannell, the late son of Stephen J. Cannell. And if the name sounds familiar, Stephen J. Cannell was a TV producer, a writer, and a novelist who created some of the most iconic TV shows in American TV history. Shows like The A-Team, 21 Jump Street, The Rockford Files, and many others. He died in Pasadena, California from complications of melanoma on September 30th, 2010. His son Derek died in San Luis Obispo, California on April 4th, 1982, at the very young age of 15. Since the Find a Grave picture has Derek's grave site in the wrong location, I'm gonna add a GPS, because it doesn't have a GPS. Yeah, but if you watch this video, you'll know it's right next to his father, just to the right of his father. Just inside the front gates, you can see the fountain here from their grave site, which is really nice. See the front gate? So everyone coming in and out of the gates can see their grave sites if they know they're here. It's too bad there's just so much shadow here this time of day. If you came in the morning, okay, that's, that's better. His epitaph reads, my time will come. Definitely need clippers. And I know some of you will say, well, why doesn't someone come and clean this? Or why doesn't the family come? It's very possible they come every month. It's just this grass grows really fast. And it's very difficult to keep these graves in some of these sections from getting covered really fast. Okay, so that's a little bit better. A little bit easier to read. Stephen Joseph Cannell's headstone reads, Stay true to your dream. 
Does anyone know what 143 stands for? I, I'm not familiar with that. Does that have something to do with writing or directing? Maybe it's a film term. So father and son laid to rest here next to each other, which is nice. Sad that Derek's headstone was almost completely covered with grass. Derek died at the young age of 15 when he was building a huge, huge monster-sized sandcastle on the beach in San Luis Obispo. And when the structure collapsed, I guess he was inside, the sand buried him and suffocated him. I mean, what an awful freak accident and how horrible, not only for him, but for his parents. In the same cemetery near the top of the hill, in the Murmuring Hills section, is the final resting place of stuntman Dar Robinson. He died in Page, Arizona on November 21st, 1986, at the very young age of 39. His epitaph reads, the world's most spectacular stuntman, a true legend in our time, like him, there will be no other. He performed countless death-defying stunts in his more than a decade-long career in Hollywood and broke numerous world records, but he never broke a bone during a performance. Sadly and ironically, he wasn't performing a stunt when he died. He was just performing a scene riding a motorcycle when he accidentally failed to slow down for a curve and rode his motorcycle over the side of a cliff to his death. He appeared in popular films such as Airport 77, Police Academy, Lethal Weapon, To Live and Die in LA, and Cyclone, which was his final film. In my last video about famous people who died as a result of an accident, so many of you mentioned Dar Robinson that I made a special trip today just to visit his gravesite here. So thank you all for letting me know about him. In that same video, I also mentioned the two child actors who died along with actor Vic Morrow in that horrific helicopter crash while they were filming the Twilight Zone movie. So I also decided to visit both of their grave sites to share with you in this video as well. Just 15 minutes east of Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills is Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the city of Glendale. And this is where child actress Renee Shenyi Chin is laid to rest. Her gravesite is located in the hillside just above the Great Mausoleum in the Everlasting Love section. Tragically, she was only six years old when she died on July 23, 1982 in the city of Valencia, California, along with fellow child actor Micah Dan Lee and veteran actor Vic Morrow, in that unbelievable and unforgettable helicopter crash during the filming of the Twilight Zone movie. I tried to find Micah Din Lee's gravesite a few years ago, but I didn't have any luck. So I decided to try again today, and this time I was able to find his gravesite. But to my surprise, once again, like Boris Segal and Derek Cannell, Micah's headstone was also covered in grass, but not as complete as the other two. Only his name was covered up, so it didn't take me quite as long to remove the grass. I don't think I've ever visited a cemetery where there wasn't a lawnmower or a weed whacker or a tree trimmer. Hard at work, but it sure seems like they're fighting a losing battle when it comes to keeping these grave sites neat and tidy. Micah was only seven years old when he died in this tragic filming accident, and he's laid to rest here in the churchyard section at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Cypress, California. In part one of this video, many of you left comments suggesting other famous accidental death victims that I should visit. Thanks so much for all the suggestions, and I'll be sharing more of them soon in part three of this series. I have already visited a few, but I still have a couple of others to find. This week, I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my newest Patreon supporters, Jeffrey Myerder, or maybe it's pronounced Murter, and Roy Martin. Thank you so much, Jeffrey and Roy, for your extra, extra generous donations to my channel. They really are appreciated. Thanks for joining me today on another trip to the cemetery, and I'll see you next time.